Once upon a time, Sneeko was a popular and respected content creator, but he hopped on the red pill wave, became a mini Andrew Tate, kind of lost his mind, and then got banned from YouTube. Since then, Sneeko has been on a downward spiral, which finally culminated in him getting which was long overdue. But I'm Ju, please like the video and sub to the channel as we discuss Sneeko's karma finally catching up to him. So let's get into it. Sneeko has been through a lot of transitions in the last couple of years, and there's a lot of lore to cover, but I'm gonna try to do it as quick as possible. So here's a quick recap. Sneeko started out as a young, creative, introspective content creator. He was articulate and well-respected in the YouTube community. He was even friends with Mr. Beast, with Mr. Beast featuring Sneeko in one of his videos before having to fire him due to conflict. Sneeko then responded by making an exposed video on Mr. Beast, which was poorly thought out and forever ruined their relationship. But Sneeko kept grinding and eventually he created his one minute podcast, which was a really popular series of videos of him interviewing strangers in public areas. But when the shutdowns due to the pandemic happened and Sneeko could no longer interact with other people for his videos, his content began to change. His videos became a lot edgier when it came to race and sometimes with straight up sexist. With his overall tone changing from being softer and more introspective to being aggressive and confrontational. Keep in mind, this was around the same time that red pill content was blowing up all over the internet. You had Kevin Samuels, Andrew Tate, and the Fresh and Fit podcast. At this point, Sneeko jumped feet first into the red pill wave and basically became a mini Andrew Tate. However, he never really had Andrew Tate's poise, conviction, or his life experience. So basically, he was just still in his talking points. But the grip worked out for Sneeko because he became more popular than he ever was, making more money than he ever had in the past. However, eventually Sneeko's content and his unhinged approach got him banned on YouTube in October 2022 for repeated violations of the TOS. And then Sneeko made the jump to Rumble and continued to up the controversy to stay relevant. But Red Pill took a big hit in December 2022 when Andrew and Tristan Tate were arrested in Romania. And even though Sneeko was seemingly passed a torch by Tristan Tate, I think them being locked up really hurt them. Sneeko modeled himself after Andrew Tate and took his talking points. He never really originated any of that Red Pill content. And I think he kind of lost his way after they were removed. So after the tapes were gone, Sneeko was just beefing with other content creators that he didn't like. And this all culminated in a big issue with Charlie, AKA Moist Critical. After Charlie made a pretty hilarious video about a ridiculous story that Fresh and Fit told, Sneeko came out in defense, basically attacking Charlie. This led to a back and forth, which went on for a while before Charlie finally responded in video form and basically decimated Sneeko. You started shit with me by insulting me and my girlfriend out of nowhere, so naturally I responded by making fun of you in return. And it got really under his skin in a big way, so he started dancing around with a gun and threatening to come shoot me. He addressed Sneeko liking pedophile light movie cuties. He addressed Sneeko being a cuck, which Sneeko himself confirmed on a peer-to-peer -peer podcast, which I don't know why you would ever admit to being a cuck. Because this was, imagine, see, imagine seeing the girl you love, like, get fucked. Get fucked. You love her? Easy. The first time, as soon as I saw like three pumps in, I just got up and walked out. I'm just like, I can't. Charlie also addressed Sneeko picking fights with people that he thought he could bully, but avoiding other fights. And finally, we have the whole clips response, which honestly ethers Sneeko, and he never really recovered from that. You wanna watch my clips? Watch my clips. Watch my clips. You wanna wa you want me to watch your clips? Watch my clips. <laughs> These are the only clips I'm watching, you are. But he's a fucking imbecile, you absolute buffoon. What you have there is not clips. These are mags. They're mags, not clips, you absolute fucking dummy. The same way that this is also a mag. They're all mags. Stop saying clips, you look fucking stupid here. After Charlie's TKO, the internet basically turned on Sneeko and he lost any of the clout or authority that he had gained over the years following the red pill wave. Recently, he made a video admitting that he had been grifting the whole time. He was doing it because it was the wave and that was a way for him to make quick money. And let's be honest, the red pill is, uh, is dying. It's over. And I got in at the right time, hit the wave at the right time. You know, I was, I was red pill raging when the red pill was blowing up. So it was perfect, you know, screaming at a camera, wake up, wake up. And then now like, okay, you know, 
live life now. Can't be screaming at a camera about Satan every single day. Since then, he's been hanging on to relevance by clinging to any of these degenerate streamers that he can hang around, like Neon. Which brings us to current day. The worst thing that could ever happen to Sneeko has happened. He's irrelevant. Nobody's talking about Sneeko. Nobody's talking about anything he says or does unless it's him taking a massive L, which in this case, he's taken several L's in the last few days. So let's go through them. To kick off the L's, Sneeko somehow ends up in a sparring match with Sean Strickland. You know, the same Sean Strickland that gave Izzy the beats and took his belt. Two minutes. Right hand go, what time you have? Two minutes. Two minutes. I want to enjoy this a little bit longer. Let that right hand go, Steve. Oh. Jesus. That's a nice. That's a nice. Again, Sean Strickland was clearly holding back. He's a UFC former champion. If he wanted to knock Sneeko out, he could easily. And really, Sneeko gets credit here for staying on his feet, for protecting himself, for not tapping out, and just making it through the sparring match. <laughs> Did you see those towels flying in of people trying to stop the fight for Sneeko? And I know this may seem mean or brutal to kind of be joyful about watching, but after how much shit Sneeko has talked to anybody and everybody over the last couple of years and challenging multiple people to fights, it's kind of rewarding to see a bully finally get... But that was just the appetizer. It gets worse, much, much worse for Sneeko's reputation and pride. Sneeko basically goes from getting punched in the face to getting ignored by the entire streaming world, which hurt his pride much, much more than getting beat up. Yes. Can you please wait with Sneeko? he completely gets ignored by two of the biggest streamers in the world, Kai and Speed. They walk right by him like he's a fan standing on the sideline waiting for an autograph, which is just brutal to watch. And once again, Sneeko is just standing there, awkward, not knowing what to do with himself. Right here, this is the face of someone looking lost and defeated and realizing they have lost all the clout that they had. As if it couldn't get worse, it does. All right, we're getting, we're getting Frank Castle. We're getting kicked. Good to see you, bro. Did we do something? What's going on? Bro, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Sneeko attending the Power Slap event, then gets kicked out of the VIP section that was meant for only streamers, which he is. He is a streamer, and he got kicked out of his own section. It's just insane. Like, everyone on that side, none of them are Rumble streamers. Nobody. I'm the Rumble streamer at a Rumble event. I'm putting me on this side. How does that make any sense? Again, I don't know, but if I felt those same vibes of everyone I was around or interacted with and no one wanted to talk to me or be around me, I feel like I would just leave. I would remove myself and go do something else somewhere else with other people that genuinely wanted to be around me. But not Sneeko. He stayed there at the event and basically complained to anyone and everyone that would listen to him. And in these clips, you can get a glimpse of why people may not want to be around him. You can see this interaction right here is a perfect example of that. He gave a light jab of Sneeko, which you could just take as a joke. Instead, Sneeko went for the kill shot, saying he did something crazy. And instead of the dude responding, he just walked off, which is a perfect response to somebody like Sneeko. Don't give him the time. Don't give him the energy. Don't give him the response. Just leave him standing there looking stupid. He then goes to DJ Academics to complain about nobody wants to be around him. And it's the industry. And it's because this, that, and the third. Like what I talk about. This is, this is a 
but you can just tell it was going in one ear and out the other. Honestly, you can't waste your time talking to people that can't take constructive criticism and don't listen. It's really just a waste of energy, which is what I think DJ Academics realized. <laughs> So yeah, that's an embarrassing spot that Sneeko finds himself in, where he's a streamer, but no other streamers want to deal with him. And streaming has a lot to do with networking. The people that you can get on your streams or that you can get to collab with you help build your stream and your reputation. So for him to be alone on an island, I don't know where Sneeko really goes from here. But that's the case of Sneeko, a real live example of be careful how you treat people on the way up because they're the same people that you'll see on the way down. And Sneeko has been on his way down for a while. And funny enough, the group of friends that he latched on to have also had their own downfalls in the Fresh and Fit podcast and Neon. When Sneeko was popular, he did nothing but try to pick fights, bully people, and be as confrontational as possible. And now that basically has him where no one wants to deal with him. And now Karma, along with Sean Strickland, are punching him in the face. So anyway, y'all let me know in the comments. Do you think all the hate that Sneeko is getting right now is deserved or is it overkill? But please make sure you check out the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.